let's talk a little bit about uh, connecting rods. On the left here, we have an old, an older style 7.3 rod. On the right, we have a PMR rod, which is a powdered metal rod. Uh, they started using these in late '99. The, my engine was a 2002, so it came with these rods. There's nothing wrong with them, unless you want to make power, and uh, then you need to switch to a forged rod. So, the difference between the two, this is a forged rod, machine surfaces at the separation. This is a powdered metal rod with a fractured break. You can tell, focus, there we go. See the roughness there? What they do is they, they while they're being manufactured, they're fractured. So the cap only goes to one rod. If you get them mixed up, you're going to have serious trouble. If you get them turned around, in other words, you flip the cap over, you'll have serious problems. Since we're making close to 500 horsepower, we have to go to the alternative, which is the older style rods from the older 7.3. I got a used set it at, uh, and these have a machine surface. There you can see that machined. And they also have to match, by the way. Now, there's other alternatives if you really are building serious horsepower. You know, above, I'd say, 500, maybe five, maybe 600 horsepower. You're going to switch to a aftermarket real forged rod from Carrillo or somebody like somebody in that in that league and they're gonna run you about three grand the diff the easy way to tell the fractured bearing cap the other thing this one has rod bolts this one has rod um, nuts and bolts here you can see no forging beam this one has been forged. You can see the beam where the metal was forged. Now I bought a used set of rods, had my machinist put ARP rod bolts in them, so they're good to go. He magnafluxed them, checked them for cracks, checked them for straightness, and we're ready to go. So let's start some assembly. I did want to mention the manufacturing differences. It's pretty interesting. These are made of powdered metal, hence the name powdered metal rods. What they do is they take the powdered metal and they put it in a mold and then they press it while heating it into a sort of like a casting almost. Whereas these are drop forged. The old real loud banging forges you hear when you drive through industrial parts of the north. That's where these were made. Um, well, I don't know if that's where these were made, but that's how these were made. They're drop forged rods, whereas these are powdered metal. Uh, drop forging is taking a hot ignit, pounding it into shape. It realigns the grain structure of the steel, makes them pretty darn strong. Powdered metal rods, hmm, grain structure would be interesting to look at. I don't know anything about them. I've never researched it, but the process for making them is pretty incredible. Um, that's about it. Okay, so we've got rods taken care of in our first discussion. Now let's talk about pistons. This is a Molly piston. That's the, mo that's the um, number. It's 20 thousandths over because we were bored 20th over. And it's also, I don't know if it says it on here or not. I don't think it does. These are also 10 thousandths reduced compression, which is a good idea if you're going to have the cylinder heads cut. Because the power stroke, 7.3, piston protrusion limit is 35 thousandths. We'll measure it when we get a couple in and we'll see what they are. But in order to avoid having to have pistons, the tops milled and all that, you can just order 10 thousandths under. Since my cylinder heads were cut, it's a safe bet that we'll be within spec. Because the deck, the block was not decked. So, And if you're under, you're just under compression. But... That'll be made up for with the cut on the cylinder heads. So let's talk about piston ring clocking. 
there are spots you don't want to put piston ring gaps. It's 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. The reason being, you never put a piston gap in line with the pivot point, which is the piston pin. So that's 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And then you don't want to do it 90 from there, which would be 6 and 12. Because of the dynamics of the compression, you'll end up with an oblong cylinder, believe it or not, because the piston will rock as it moves up and down. And that force is enough to drag that gap down a spot you don't want it dragged down. So that leaves us with, let's, let's just clock one and I'll show you how I do it. This is the oil gap ring. It's joined together so you can't separate them. And we're gonna put that at like 10 o'clock. Technically, the secondary ring should now be moved to three or four o'clock, excuse me, four or five o'clock, which would be right about here. Now, technically, this top ring should be 180 from the second, which would put it in line with the oil gap ring. So that leaves us two, or one and two, and seven and eight. Well, it, it doesn't matter which one. We'll choose, because this one is over here, we'll choose seven and eight. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's not on any one of those axes we don't want. And then we're ready to assemble that to the rod and install it. And because, I didn't go over this during the rod session, but because I've got ARP rod bolts installed, these are forged rods. Like we said, the other PMR rods have bolts. These have nuts and bolts. We're going to take this. When we put the pist Before we put the piston in, we're going to put these covers over. So that when we push the piston down, nothing can hit the crankshaft. Oh, let me get that in the frame. Nothing can hit the crankshaft. This is just clear vinyl tubing. Take a heat gun. I think it's 3 8 tubing. Take a heat gun. Uh, work, your, work it on there. Heat it up. Let it set. It takes a set, and you can slide them on and off pretty easy, which will work. It's a cheap way of doing journal guards, and it'll work fine. So let's get ready and put some pistons in.